Okay, hello and welcome, welcome everyone to another live on Marlene's How To's. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's probably very hot where you are right now. We're in the summer months and it has been hot. I decided to say, you know what, the hair is going back today because <laughs> even though we have air conditioning, I still feel kind of warm sometimes. So be sure to leave me your comments, you know, um, you know, in the chat. I always love to see them. We have this wonderful interaction uh, whenever we go over, you know, all of the different things that we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up, just take a quick look here. Hello, Andrea. Welcome, welcome to Georgia Peaches. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you. So as we are in the summer months, guys, um, you know, for my lives in recent times, I've basically been featuring either a fruit, a vegetable, or a flower for that particular life. Since it is a gardening channel, you know, we grow our fruits, we grow our veggies, and at some point we want to eat them, right? Because that's why we planted them in the first place. And if it's flowers, we want to enjoy them. So being summertime, there are so many tomatoes around right now. We decided that the star of the show today would be tomatoes. And let me make sure you can see it right here. So um, I just reaped my first, this is my first um, harvest. I did get some beans before, but this is my first harvest here from our raised bed. Because normally uh, we just plant them in a regular garden bed. But this year, if you were watching my videos, you'll see that we did a raised bed. And, you know, these are, are what we got from there. So I'm just going to show you really quick. This tomato is actually from the store because the one from my raised bed is not as ripe as it. And the reason why I do that, guys, is because if I leave them there to get too ripe, it doesn't show as obvious on here, you know, on the camera. But if you um, if I leave them out for too long, then the birds might end up having them. I love birds, you know, I'm a bird watcher and all of that. But I want to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Our family wants to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So this one is from the store. I'm going to give this one one more days. And a tip, too, to get your tomatoes to ripen quickly or any other fruit for that matter is to put them next to an apple or, an, you know, put them in a brown paper bag with some apples. So let me show you an apple really quick right here. Everybody knows what an apple looks like. But these are the ones that I typically get. You know, the dirty dozen um, apples are on that. So I typically buy organic apples. Of course, you buy whatever apples you want, but that's just a personal preference for me. So typically you just get your apple and your tomato, put it in a brown paper bag. And you can even pick them when they're, you know, just slightly a tinge of yellow and it will still be fine. Drop it in a brown paper bag, put it in maybe like a cupboard. Don't forget it now. And then you go in a few days, maybe like three days, check it out. And by then it should be ready for you. And in Jamaica, we didn't have apples like these for the most part. Sometimes we did, they were imported. We just put it in a brown paper bag anyway, and the darkness, you know, will help it to ripen up faster than having it just sit out um, on your counter. So, so I'm just putting a disclaimer in there, you know, I did eat my tomato, the very first one so far. They're not as big as last year, and I guess it's because I didn't put, um, I've been so busy this year trying to get the channel up. Um, I didn't put as much like Epsom salt that I normally use, Epsom salt. My husband always says it's not Epsom salt, it's Epsom salt. So normally I put like Epsom salt solution on there and I did a previous video about it as well too. And also just other things to help to nourish the soil a little bit more because tomatoes, they can be a little bit finicky sometimes. And that's why I normally recommend it, like if you're a beginning gardener, that beans might be the best, you know, and I even did a video on that too. Beans would be the best thing to try to really encourage you to keep going with your, you know, your garden because these, they don't demand much and they give nitrogen back to the soil. And you can see here, this was the second harvest that I did. And guys, I only planted one pack of beans. And I got, you know, this is the second amount that I'm getting here. And I also got some thyme as well too. And I wish that we had, what do you call it? Like smell a vision, you could smell them because you know, thyme, it just always smells so good. Every time I smell them, it's like I wanna have some fish. So let me take a look at the comments here. Neil Chin is there, he says, hi, hi Neil, hi Bruce, welcome, welcome. So yes, the start of the show today is tomato. And if it's your first time on this channel, my name is Marlene. It's Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel. So today my husband is gonna be making some juicy hamburgers and he's gonna do them inside the oven for you. Because again, of course it's always nice to have that grilled flavor and everything, but they can be just as delicious if they're made inside the oven. And that way you get to stay out of the heat because it is so hot. And I'd love for you to tell me in the comments, you know, like the temperatures in your area, how it's going right now, how hot it's been for you. We're in the southeastern United States. We've been looking at temperatures like in the mid to upper 90s for the past two weeks. It has been really, really hot. So like I said, this is kind of like ponytail weather right now, you know, trying to keep nice and cool. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. So my husband is going to come over very shortly and he's going to go ahead and get started with the um, with the burgers. And we're going to be using some different things, of course, to put in there. 
Now, some people, they don't have red meat, so they may want to try um, turkey instead, like the turkey, um, turkey meat, the ground turkey, which we have in the past, but somehow the flavors have been changing a little bit. So we're not really red meat eaters, but today we're going to be using um, ground chuck. And this one, if you can see it right here, this one, they said it's, um, I think it's, yes, it's 80% lean and 20% fat. So it's not very fatty. If you just get the regular ground beef, of course, it's going to be a lot more fat in there, which is not too good for you. But, you know, it's okay to have, especially if you like need iron in your diet and so on. It's not a bad idea to have red meat every now and then, unless you've been given strict orders by your doctor not to have red meat. You know, just a little every now and then. So this is kind of like our little escape, right? They were basically having... um. We're having um, our red meat in this way by way of the burgers. So let me take a look and see. Bruce Lee says, hello, everyone. They're saying hello to each other. And she says, I prefer a nice beef burger. And that's it, too, because like I said, in the past, we used to have a lot of um, turkey burgers. But if the flavor been changing for us, we think, over the last couple of years, so we've kind of switched to beef, but we don't have it too often. So, again, this is my little harvest, guys. I may show it a little later in the video again and more people come on. But um, this one is from the store, like I said, because it's a little bit more riper than mine. And this is mine right here. I have my thyme and my beans. So my husband is going to come over and go ahead and get started. So, of course, this is um, the ground beef right here. So he's going to go ahead and do that. And again, it's going to be done inside the oven just to keep you, you know, out of the heat. If you're not running a picnic or something like that outside. So you can come and say hello to them so they can, they can see your face. You could just how you doing everybody all right yeah like Marlene was saying we use we typically use like 80 percent um for for in terms of the grown chuck some people will, if you go more lean like 90 percent or so then it's drier so it's always good to have a little bit of fat in there and you don't have to worry about the fat because when you put it in the heat the fat melts off right so you basically have less fat so mm -hmm. everything will be will be fine but that, that adds to moisture yes. for the burger so it's more juicy in that way so um like Martin was saying before you can use either beef you can use chicken you can use turkey you know whatever whatever you like and you know in some cases it can be vegan right so it's, you just basically substitute what? what you want what would you use for vegan you could use like tofu oh okay and, you know veggie you know stuff like that yeah yeah some right, people so, prefer that well, well we'll just basically pop this baby open and then I'll I'll give you the ingredients as we add them on, right? So my wife is always telling me <laughs> they gotta give measurements, right? I know we do things by well, like for eyesight, this. so yeah. But, but I'll, I'll, I'll okay. measure it for you. <laughs> but I just do it by by feel and and, and sight, right? So let's right. make sure you can see what he's doing there. Right. So I'm just gonna pop and this. You want to tell him the ingredients first, like the things that you need, okay. and I can bring them over for you. Sure. So basically, what I normally do is just very basic stuff. Drop the meat, right, or whatever filling you're going to use. I use celery. It's a nice thick one. Bell pepper. If you can have it. And onion. What else? Onion, okay. Right. But there's an onion right there. All right. So depending on the type of onion you have, you know, you, you, if it's not very strong, then you want to use more. Right. Typically, I use one whole onion. Right. Um, and then I'd use breadcrumbs right and just this is just a little bit of breadcrumbs just to help to hold it together a little bit and then um the last ingredient will be um whatever sauce you want to use so one second All right now this is just for for the sake of you guys you can use um oyster sauce or you can use the fish and meat sauce so it's either or or if you want to, you can use hoisin sauce, right? So depending on what flavor you want to go for, you can be, you basically add it. So if you want to do, say, a barbecue type flavor, then you use the barbecue sauce in there, but then you use less because that will burn, right? So you basically will just use whatever sauce you want to use. So for the sake of today, I'm going to use the oyster sauce, right? So Again, like I said, if you wanted to get a jerk flavor, you could use a jerk seeds, jerk sauce, or you know, a fish and meat sauce, or a hoisin sauce. Yeah. Right? And where but, would they find those? Like, because I know that those are some well, of those, those are kind of like international um, items. Yeah, you get them at an international market. Um, 
market, Market's. or you can get in the international aisle at Walmart, Target, you know, wherever you shop, you, you, you'll find those there pretty easily, right? So that's why I'm choosing items that you can easily find, right? Or if you want, you can also go for your Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, I okay. love Worcestershire. Right? But if you use Worcestershire sauce, you want to add something else to it because it, it needs to give a little more flavor, okay? Let so, me take a look at the comments really quick before you go any further. And you talked about the breadcrumbs already, right? These are seasoned right. breadcrumbs. Because sometimes you have the plain breadcrumbs, but these are seasoned breadcrumbs. So let me just catch up on the chat here. The two Georgia peaches said, I just had a homemade beef burger this evening with cheese, lettuce, and tomatoes. Delicious. Absolutely. And the weather is perfect for, um, for all of that stuff. Um, and you said that was a nice idea. I'm not sure. Maybe that was for the sauce that he had put in there. And Joel says, I admittedly prefer the red onion. The taste is divine in the meat. <laughs> yes. Actually, red onions, I think they're delicious everywhere. But I tend to use them more like when I'm having them in something that's going to be eaten raw. But of course, like you said, it you know probably does taste really good in there as well, too. But I tend to use it um, in, um, you know, like, because I'm going to be doing a coleslaw. I may or may not put some red onion in there, but we'll definitely slice, put a slice on top of the burger once we are finished. So yeah. thank you so much for your comments so far. And if you have any questions as we go along, be sure to put them in there. As you've been doing so far, you can always, you know, talk to each other in the chat. We love to see that kind of exchange that you're doing there. So we're going to have to dip the camera a little bit down so you can see what he's doing step by step. And like he was saying, this is his way of doing it. Um, everybody kind of, you know, tweets it a little bit in terms of what they might want to use. Let me make sure you can see. So which are the sauces? Because you had three different ones. Which one are the ones you're going to use? Well, I'm going to use the oyster, oyster sauce. So this is the one he's going to be putting in there, the oyster sauce. And if you can't even find these, you know, because it's an open world right now, right? So if you can't find these in your, um, like in your grocer, you can always order them online. You go on Amazon or all the other online sites that sell stuff. And you can find these things on there too. So, you know, it might not come to you immediately, but maybe in a day or two, depending, depending on how quickly they deliver to where you are, what type of Amazon account you have, or the type of merchant, vendor, Walmart, or whomever. You know, you will get it. It just may take you another day or two or so. But yes, guys, that's the one that he is using today. All right. So are we going to preheat the oven at this point? Yeah. Go ahead and get it started. And what kind of temperature are you normally putting it at? All right. So put it um, 350. Air fry. And I normally put it at 375, 400, depending on how quickly you want it done. And then you give it for 45 minutes. Everything is clear from in there. Yep, so we're good to go. All right. Okay. So this is two and a quarter pounds, right, of ground beef. And then... Let me tilt this down a little bit that way. And how many, about how many people do you think that would make burgers for? How many right, So this, based on the size that I make them, because I'm gonna, you're going to see them a little big. Big, big yes, big. he does. You will, <laughs> you will probably get about, I'd say, eight burgers out of this easily right if you make them smaller you make them flat then you'll get like about you know you get like 10 or 12 burgers right so i'm gonna make about probably um six to eight burgers from this okay, okay? all righty so let's get the camera lens down here so you can see what okay. he is doing now also you know you, you know i didn't add any salt to it because basically the sauce itself would add salt to the meat right so that makes it a whole lot healthier and it doesn't dry it out, right? That's so. a good point too. Um, I think that works, you know, when you don't put salt in the burger meat, it actually helps to keep it a little bit more moist too, because all the condiments that you put in, like you said, you know, they have salt in them anyway. Yeah, and if you, if you do a lot of cooking, you'll know that when you add salt directly to beef before you actually cook it, it makes the meat tougher, right? So this is my way of keeping it moist as long as possible and softer. So that when you, the minute the, the sauce goes on it, I just throw it in the oven so I just start cooking right away so it doesn't really get hard. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the comment here. So Andrea says, well, let me, I don't want to skip anybody. After Joel, two Georgia Peach says, oh, she says, I put a little barbecue sauce on mine. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's that's a good idea too. Some barbecue sauce. Um, and Joel says, I'm curious if there if there are organic versions of these sauces. That I am not sure of. I mean, we typically just go with those, and they have been okay so far, so I'm not too sure about that. Um, Andrea's kidney transplant says, when it comes to buffalo, lamb, 
or any gamey meats, what do you recommend to up the taste? So, because some of those can be a little bit gamey. So she says like lamb, because you know I think they have ground lamb too, right? Yeah, so ground like, lamb. Yeah. So the more the more the more gamey the meat, I would say add more onions. So in the case of like the beef and so on, I'd add like a whole a whole onion, so or like something like um, you know something that's like uh, tofu or something like that. Then I'd add less because then it, you know it, it, you it's don't milder. need as much, yeah. right? So like like chicken and so on, I don't use as much onions but if you really need for the flavors to come up more you, you add more onions the same thing you do with most most seasonings that you do okay that's a great question andrea <laughs> so he's gonna go ahead and um cut it up for us here right. when you're cutting onions right you typically cut it this way across because you want to release the flavors but yes. i'm going to basically dice it but you know i'm just keeping it easier so let's cut across the rings like that right so i do it halfway and that makes it easier for, for you to cut it up. So for that amount of beef, how much are you going to be using? Like one large onion? Is that what you're putting in? Or are you putting in the whole? Um, huh? All right, I'm going to do. I'm going to do one. So I'm thinking I'll need to get another one for you for your coleslaw. That's okay. Or I may just use a red onion for the coleslaw. Okay. So let me see. There's another question coming in here. So Joel says. How about venison or bison meat? Yeah, and that's what she, oh bison. Yeah, I think she meant bison when she said buffalo. But um, yeah, pretty much the same thing. How much onion would you put in those? Just a little bit more, and it just depends too, because some people can't have a lot of onions. There are people who are actually allergic to onions, so it just depends on you know what you can have. But um, that's what I would say. Just you know, kind of like go with what what go with what you like, because not everybody likes you know to have a lot of um onions in their food. So another great question there again. And what I've always heard you like when you're cutting onions, they say start from the top because the bottom of the onion tends to have a lot more of the, you know, irritating um, compounds that are in there. And they're very good for you, by the way. They have a lot of, um, there's a compound called allicin in onions and that, that actually helps you. Yeah, all of those that are in the onion family, you know, shallots, onions, you know, all the different ones, um, scallion or green onions. Um, but there's a little more concentration at the bottom of the onion. So you typically want to start from the top. Because, you know, onions make you cry sometimes. <laughs> Especially if they're kind of like really strong onions, you know, that can happen to you. So start from the top and then work your way down so you're most likely to not have as much irritation. So even though those compounds are good for you in one way in terms of nutrition and helping to fight diseases and all of that, at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, it can be irritating. So it is kind of like you kind of have to know how to deal with it. It's great for sinus problems. <laughs> You can surely open them up, right? <laughs> Lorna says, hello, everyone. Hi, hey, Lorna. Lorna. Welcome, welcome, my dear. So glad to see you. So let's tilt the camera down again so you can see what he's doing here. So he's going well, Some people may want to use like, um, you know, the, um, what do you call it now? <laughs> Dicer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some food, people have those too. Yeah. Food processor. To right. chop it up right. if you're doing a you lot can, can i guess that, yeah you know, that but makes i'm kind sense. of old school like to feel what i'm doing so yeah that's why i cut it up this way by hand and i have sensitive skin so i typically let him cut the onions and he's chopping them up and some people have that whole you know chef thing where they go chop 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 yeah. <laughs> that's not us here trying, you know yeah i'm not trying to keep all my digits <laughs> together <laughs> And say, if you're not too sure about that part, leave it out. <laughs> I figure maybe half might be enough for this one, though, because this is a big yeah, onion. Yeah, but what happens is that sometimes the onions are not as flavorful. So if it's not strong and it's not your nose drip and all that, then you know the onion is not very <laughs> strong. So you just want to add a little bit more just to make sure it helps. Because what happens is that the, the onion itself, the acid in there and, and some of the other components basically help the acidity of it rather really helps to release the flavor from the meat or whatever meats you're using because when you're cooking like curry chicken for example onions are key you use a lot of onions and that's mm -hmm. that's what really makes the flavor come out yeah for most foods too and you know like you know because we're from jamaica where you know we're island people so um you know we tend to like our food to be very spicy so again if you don't like a lot your food to be as spicy as we do then you can always lose, use a little bit less than what we're using here. So Lorna, um, do you make burgers sometimes? I'd love to see like what you, um, you know, if you use turkey or beef 
or because we were showing earlier that you know you have different excuse me you have different types of um sauces that we use to flavor it to make it a little more juicy and this is the one that he uses sometimes so this is one of them here and we also had the um jamaican fish and meat sauce you must have put those away already we also talk about Worcestershire sauce some people like using that as well too so it just depends this is the one oh, this is the sauce after you this is this is if you want to put this on after you're done when you're ready to eat it And by the way, the last slide that I did, as he was chopping up there, the last slide that I did was um was actually the two two thousand um subscriber giveaway, and um I did send the prizes out because you know um you know we had some illness in our family, and um I do want to thank those of you you know um watching on a lot of people typically come on the replay as well too, so I just want to say thank you so much for um for your prayers you know um for my sister and um all the other things that have been happening. So we really appreciate that. Um, you know, we thank you so much for it. But that, so it kind of kept me from sending out your prizes. Lorna, I don't know if you got yours yet. Oh, Lorna says she uses turkey. She uses turkey. And that's what yep. we were saying earlier. We um, we used to use turkey, but somehow the flavor of take turkey has changed a little bit to us. So we kind of like backed off a little bit. So we'll just use beef maybe like, we'll have, you know, like the ground beef, maybe like maybe once or twice per month. And that's it. But I understand. But um, so Lorna, um, I did send your gift out. Um, they said you should have gotten it on Wednesday. I hope that you have gotten it, or it's just maybe a little slow. I don't know. But the other persons they have gotten there. So again, congratulations right. on your win, and thank you for all of your support. You know, for the um to get me to two thousand plus subscribers. You know, keep growing and learning more every day, and that's kind of what YouTube is about. You know, learning from each other as we go along. So. Thank you for all of that. So let's turn this on a little bit here so you can see what he's doing there again. So he's basically using two, I mean, three, um, quarters. three quarters of an onion because that's a large onion. So we figured that would be enough. So a lot of onions going in there, guys. All right. And my eyes are beginning to water a little bit. So that means this onion is kicking good. <laughs> so one of the key things to, to help also cut down on the onions burning you is to wet your hands with water, um, you know, so you, when you're holding it, it helps to keep some of that fume down. Yeah, I've heard that too. And again, just, you know, start your onions, cutting them from the bottom. I'm sorry, not from the bottom, from the top, because oh, they say the bottom makes it irritate you more. There's more the chemical down in there. So if you're doing a lot of onions, like for a special occasion or something, you know, cut the tops first and then do the bottoms when you're about to finish doing what you're doing. So Lorna says, um... She said she just got the, her um her winnings that she got from the 2K subscriber giveaway just coming in. That's why I'm late. Yeah, no problem. And of course, you know, we thank you so much for joining us because you could have decided to go take a nap or something, but you decided to come here instead. So we definitely appreciate that. And she says, thanks, Marlene. I love it. So she liked her gift. And that's to my sister, Andrea, on the chat here. Andrea's kidney transplant live. She's the one who made the earrings like I told you on the live. And she's really good at it. It's just a hobby for her at this point. And so I was quite happy to um to get those out to you. So, you know, I'm glad that you like them. I know Penny says she got hers too, and she said that she she likes it. Thank you so much. Um, Stacy, um, she's had some issues going on right now. So I know uh, and today's her birthday, actually. So Stacy, if you ever do get to watch this replay, I hope you got your earrings for in time for your birthday. Happy birthday. And I pray that God blesses you with many, many more. So Andrew says, I feel like you are both cooking gour gourmet burgers all the hard work and ingredients no, it doesn't take that long we're just kind of going slow because you guys are are watching us but yeah it's gonna be delicious and well worth the effort so we're just basically at um the second ingredient which is basically your burger and your um your onions so tell them what you're gonna um put in there next now okay so next i'll put in there the, the celery and you basically just remove all the extra fibers unless you want to have flossing when you're eating. Yeah, we're not trying to do that. <laughs> that would be, yeah. This looks like you're stripping Kalaloo. For those who are from Jamaica on this chat, you know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> Look like when we're stripping Kalaloo. I think they strip colored greens um over here in America, right? They strip the colored greens like that for um most of for Thanksgiving, but it can be had anytime throughout the year, yeah. especially in the, the southern areas of the country. Southern and southeastern. Bring it down a little bit. So they're talking to each other. Sorry, let's take a look now. 
at where you are next. And all of these things are so good for you. As you're watching this video earlier today and they were saying, you know, you know, try to keep as much natural fruits, vegetables in your diet, you know, things that come straight from the garden because it's better for your health. You know, it's good for your gut health. And that's where basically, you know, a lot of things, good or bad, um, happen inside your body. So it's good to have a lot of um, foods with fiber. Because, of course, you could just put your burger, put salt, pepper, and some different, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, and it's still flavorful. But when you put the stuff that has all the fiber in there, it is so much better for you health-wise, you know? All right. So he's moving along here. So, Questy, what do you guys like to put on your burgers? Your um, your condiments, I suppose. Yeah. You know, some people like to put, like, cheese. Some people like to put, you know, bacon, you know, different things like that. Mm-hmm. So... Of course, tomato and lettuce, and that's the star of the show today. You know, I don't have one to show you. Let me show you, Lorna, since you um came on a little bit after. Let me just come up for you a little second there. So this is what we, this is the harvest here. This one is actually from the store because it's a little bit more riper than the one I got from the garden because I picked this um because I have to get ahead of the birds. If I don't pick it early enough, then it's kind of like they'll come and get it. So we got um that, you remember the raised bed that we made? And we have our beans here, another reaping of beans right there. And, you know, I just planted a pack of beans, basically. And this is the second time we're getting beans. And, of course, it's thyme. And it smells so good, I'm telling you. And it's kind of helps keep some of the bugs away. But you have to put it everywhere. And it's good to cut your thyme before. Or any other her herbs, cut them before they start to flower. Because if they start flowering, you lose flavor. And not only that, it's, it's, the seeds will spread all over. And this... Time can be kind of aggressive in the garden if you just allow it to just do whatever it wants. So if you don't want it to spread, you're going to have it flower and give you seeds. You may want to keep it in a container somewhere and that's not with your other stuff. This is our little harvest right here. So this, I'm going to give this one more day. And like I said, in Jamaica, we normally put these in like a brown paper bag, you know, to have it um ripen up a little faster. We tend to put like an apple in there sometimes too because that really gives it a nice kickstart. So... So this is the one from the garden, the beans, the thyme, and then this is the one from the store. Just so we can use it to um put on top of the burger when we're finished. So he's cutting up that celery right here now. So you want the amount of onions you added probably be about let's say. Oh, oops, sorry. About a cup of onions, depending on the, the strength of the onions. Or like we I have, said, three quarters of a, of a um, large onion. And we have a bell pepper here, so I'm just going to go ahead and seed it for him. You can put bell pepper in there. It has a nice little flavor to it. I'm not having so many bell peppers these days. For some reason, it repeats on me, but I just love the flavor. So you can use the red ones. I figure like the red on, red and the yellow ones said to have a little bit more flavor to them. Plus, yeah. they add a little bit of color to, you know, your burger as well, too. Yes, I'm going to scrape out the seeds. Because we want to see um, this thing bake. I don't know how long it's going to take to bake. Okay. Well, she's doing the, and I'm doing the, um, the baking. That's one half. Uh, I'll use an air fryer for that. And then um, she'll do a coleslaw. And then over here now, um, I'm looking at the seeds right here. And I'm thinking about my sister because she just stuck, you know, she had a bell pepper. She just took these out and stuck them down in her pot. And all the seeds, they just grew up in one of those spots. I'm just like, that is so nice. So, you know, as simple as I mean, this. She has a one that's green young. Bun. Oh, yeah. And she surely does. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the seeds, you can just, like, take these out and you can plant them. You know, and maybe it's a little late in the season if you're watching this when the video is released. Because we're at the end of July right now, unless you're tropical all year round. If you're in a cooler climate where it gets cold, you get hard freezes and it's probably a little bit late for you. Otherwise, you can still plant them. You know, just stick it in the ground. You can put them to dry, you know, um, shake them off, let them dry, and then just sprinkle them a little bit so they're spread out. But either way, you want to thin them out once you have, um, they get to maybe like about two inches or so so that they're not competing so much for water and for nutrients in the soil. I'm just rinsing it off over here. Here's another one coming up. You sound like a sous chef now. Is that what you call it? <laughs> chop, chop, chop in a way. It can go fast, but uh, yeah, no, that's no, good no enough. Yeah, we don't want no to have incidents. any incidents. <laughs> so, gotta keep it simple. 
What are you gonna use to um to mix it around? You're gonna use a fork to mix it around? Yep. Okay. Let me take a look at the comments here. What Lorna said here. We talked about what you wanted to put on top of your burger. So Andrea says cheese, lettuce, and tomatoes are a must. And I'd be interested to know what kind of cheese you use, Andrea. I like provolone cheese. It's more that's used typically more for Italian stuff, but sometimes I'll put it on my burger too. Provolone, or um, I guess which was the other one again? Like maybe like um, is it the white cheddar? Perhaps the white cheddar, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, let me see. So Lorna says, "Oh yes, the thyme will take over the garden." Yes, I, that sounds like you've had some experience with that, Lorna, where you um, you planted thyme and. Once you allow that thing to see, man, I'm telling you, that thing, it can be very aggressive. You know, it really will take over your garden. And again, you know, if you allow it to flower, the seasonings, they lose flavor. So you want to make sure that you, you know, harvest them like I did before they even start to. But you see, like some little tiny heads start to roll, like a little flower head about to open up. Don't even let it get to that. You know, you just want to um, reap it before it gets to that point. Or like I said, keep it in a container, maybe on your patio your porch, your veranda, if you want, because they look pretty too. You know, they're kind of like, almost kind of like a fern, but not. So you can even put it on your, you know, your your um, your um front porch if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, basically that way you have a little bit more control over them seeding and spreading like everywhere. So, okay. So Stephanie, Stephanie says, um, hi, Marlene. Oh, hey, Stephanie, how are you? Good to see you, my dear. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So Andrea says she likes sharp, sharp yellow cheddar. Okay, so you like that kick from your cheese. Okay, <laughs> that is awesome. And I think the provolone cheese is probably a little bit more mild. Um, but, you know, I, it's fine for me. I absolutely like that. Whoever is giving those hearts, I can't tell. Thank you for sending those over. I appreciate you so much. And we have Stephanie saying she likes to put, oh, look at this. She likes cheese on her burger. She likes lettuce. She likes tomatoes. She likes pickles and bacon, LOL. All right, I see you. That's a gourmet burger for real. Deborah says, hi, Marlene, and the chat. Hi, Deborah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you know, Stephanie always, she's always, you know, rooting for us. Stephanie says, don't forget to give the thumbs up. Yes, yeah, so the thumbs up, you know, right to where the live chat is at the top. You can just click on that and it sends a good message out to YouTube. So they'll, you know, on the replay, you know, they send it out to more people for it, you know, for them to watch it after the fact, which a lot of times that's where most of my live views come from. With a few exceptions, you know, they come like um, maybe a day or two afterwards. So <laughs> to Georgia Peach, she's just laughing. She says, she says, I tried to get my pickles, but the bottle was frozen. Oh, so I guess the back of your fridge maybe was because that happened to us the other day. I went back in the back of the fridge for an egg and I was like, this egg is not shaking. Went back for the back of the cart and I milk back there. It's ice. So I'm just like, I guess the refrigerator is too high. And it being summertime, you figure that that would be more of an issue in the wintertime. But for some reason, they were freezing at the back of the refrigerator. So we had to kind of like turn it, I guess you say, up in this case, the temperature up a little bit. So that way that wouldn't happen anymore. So I understand about the <laughs> your items freezing in the refrigerator. So there, you guys are saying hello to each other. Oh, it was Deborah. Deborah says, I sent you lots of hearts and I did see them. Thank you so much, Deborah. Welcome, welcome. So glad to have you. And she yeah, says, I un do understand. Yes, and she says, indeed. So, all right. So, um, so right now, just tell them where you are at this point right, for so those who just came in. I added um, two and a quarter pounds of grown chuck. 80%? 80% um, lean and 20% fat. And the reason for that is because the fat will basically burn out in the oven. So that will help the, the, the burgers to be more moist. Right, and I did it three quarters of a medium sized onion, mm -hmm. one bell pepper, sorry, one mini bell pepper, I and a see. stalk of um, celery. celery. Mm -hmm. And now I'm about to add the uh, breadcrumbs, one cup of breadcrumbs. Right, and again, normally I don't measure it, I just, just eyeball it, it. Eyeball it. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to put about two thirds first yeah, to, see how, to see how it goes. Yeah. And then I'll add the rest of it. As I said before, I didn't add any salt or anything like that. I'll add the sauce because that basically helps all of that to keep the meat from being too salty and get it to be flavorful. All right now, I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. Hands up. You want gloves or? No, I'm just gonna go okay. hands on. I can't do that, guys. I have sensitive skin. <laughs> I can't do that. Not, I have to this put way, gloves this on. way, this yeah. way, you can tell how much 
breadcrumbs are actually neat. Yeah, the texture. Right. What about black pepper? Dry. Can I put black pepper in there? Yeah, you can add black pepper if you want. So you want me to get it for you? for you? Yeah. All right. All right. And sometimes you can just add the leaves from the thyme. You know, like I said, it just depends on the type of flavor you want when you're doing it. Mm hmm I'm gonna put it in there now. Yeah, let me mix it another oh, bit okay. first. All right. Just put it right there. Feel so you can see how much breadcrumbs. Mm hmm Because we're going from moisture, guys. And I know some people, you know, as far as their food goes, they tend to they like um when they're they have a little bit of pink in the burger, but it's probably an island thing, guys, you know. We like to have our burgers and our steaks cooked through, not burnt, so you can't eat it and digest it properly. But we like when our burger is cooked, you don't see any pink in there. So, but at the same time, we want it to be juicy because I understand that, you know, like if it's cooked a lot, like your steaks and your burgers, it can be a little dry. So that's why we try to do it in a way where, it, you know, it's moist, but at the same time, it's cooked through and through. And it, especially if you're doing, like you're doing ground meat, that tends to be more when you can get like, you know, like, um, you know, I guess like different type of um, bacteria poisoning. and food yeah. poisoning, um, you know, things that can cause that. So it's if it steaks, it's not as bad because you're just the outside that you're going to wash off and then you cook it. So less likely. But ground meat that gets ground into things on surfaces, you have a higher likelihood that you could have food poisoning from there. So that's why we like to cook it through. But, you know, it just depends on what you prefer. All right, so it's, it's holding together. So mm -hmm. this is just about the amount of bread comes to do so. I won't add the other third, right? I just basically add um, two thirds breadcrumbs to it. And then I'll go ahead and add the black pepper. And again. So he's using one hand to do it, guys. So he has one clean hand and one hand that's in the meat at this point, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's we'll see where the tray is. Where's your tray you're going to put them on? The tray is inside the oven. So it's going to, it's nice and hot. I'm not going to take it out. You won't need to take it out. <laughs> Well, yeah, you've made it. They need to see you doing it. So let me All take right. it out so they can see it. Let me All take right. this off of here. All right, I'll tell you what. Wash the board. So you wanted it to be warm when you were putting it on there, or did you just leave yeah. it in here by mistake? Uh, I, want, I don't think really want it to be warm because I want it to be kicking. Okay, I'm going to put it on there. Because right. that way it won't it's stick, like it won't stick, it won't stick to, the, yeah. to the pan when, it, when, you, when it's hot. And so I had it in there like that. So I'm just kneading it just shapes. like you need dough because I want everything to be evenly mixed. And then pop this baby off. I can hold it for you. All right. Again, I'm going to measure this for the sake of the video because normally you I just, just, I, I, just, I, I just a rough idea. It. It's okay. All right. So now let me use one. So they kind of can figure it. All right. So about how much you think that is? About four one, tablespoons? Two, three. That look like about five. Yep. Five. Yeah, all right. So five tablespoons. And again, when you mix it in, you basically feel the meat to see how moist it is. And that way you'll know if you add it too much. And again, like I said, I didn't add any salt because the sauce has enough salt in there. He's mixing away. You can't see from your hand right there. Okay, thank sorry. you. That's okay. Let me see the comments. I don't want to miss the comments on here. The Deborah says she gave me a thumbs up. Thank you. Stephanie says, oh, yeah, I forgot about the onions and bell pepper. I love it all. Absolutely. Because why not? I mean, food is made for us to enjoy, right? Just try to eat healthier stuff. But put as much as you can so it's as flavorful as you can have it. And you can really enjoy your meal. You know, all of these things come with flavors in them for a reason. It's for us to enjoy them, right? So I would say go for it, Stephanie. I'm right there. I'm on that train with you. Okay. And she says, I agree. I don't want to see any pink. That <laughs> you put the pink in all caps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no move. No move. Yeah, we're on this, we're on we're on the same boat, Stephanie. <laughs> and right, um so, there was, hmm? Okay. So my burgers are typically make them about the size of a tennis ball. You mean baseball? Uh, no, tennis, <laughs> a, uh, Which te oh you mean like um tennis, te like okay, tennis, lawn, lawn tennis. tennis. Okay, right, like so, okay. So all that size, right? And then I basically just squish it. Right. So you roll it. Oh, it's two hands. Uh huh. Roll it together. Are you gonna grease that thing, or is it okay to nah, grease? You don't need nah, to grease it. Okay. Are we doing oven baked? 
keep you out of the heat from all of that heat that's going on outside all over mm -hmm. the country and the world. So and that look, see that guys, size. that's a big old burger, but that's how he makes them and that's how we love them. And when you do them like that, it keeps it juicy because right. it's thicker, so there's more, you know. Now, if you if you flatten them more, so it's about the size of my hand, then right, you'll cook it for a, about um, two thirds of the time because it's thinner, mm -hmm. so it'll basically dry out a whole lot faster. Right, so when it's like this, you'll basically go for about thirty minutes, 25, 30 minutes. Okay, and that would be it. All right, so you want me to just lay them on there? You want to put it on here? Is it cool enough? It? Uh, no, they can it, see you. Me. I can turn the I can turn the um okay. turn the laptop that way a little bit so they can see what you do. They can still even see you from here actually. They can see you. So you see how thick it is, guys? <laughs> Bring it over a little bit more this way. All right. There you go. It's a little further away, but you get it. You can show them again like the size that this looks so big, it looks even bigger bigger than what I remember. But these right, burgers so are quite juicy. Let me take a look at the comments again. So you guys are saying hi to each other. Um, so Deborah says she like her food well cooked, yes. And again, that's probably an island thing. Stephanie, I know you're from the United States, so I don't know, but in the islands for sure we like it well done. So Joel says, in terms of cooked beef, if if it drew breath, I don't want anything remotely medium. <laughs> So basically, you want yours to be well done as well. So I think we have more people on the well done um, train, but you know, not you know overcooked, of course, because then yeah, it's going to be dry and weird. And the reason for that is just basically you know, just don't want to get sick. That's yeah, want to keep that's, it that's, safe. that's pretty much it. You yeah. don't want to get sick, so you know, just on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I do that. Way. Yeah. So Stephanie says, "Oh yes, that burger will be juicy, and I'll be fat full." <laughs> One pot meal. <laughs> I completely agree. But but like I said, you know, because, you know, they tell you not to have too much red meat, which I understand. That. And some people are actually allergic to beef because I know people like that. Um, and if you have if you've ever had Lyme disease, I think they say you also get allergic to beef. But, you know, you don't want to have too much because of cholesterol and all the other stuff associated with red meat. But every now and then, it's not bad to have a little bit, maybe like a steak, you know, or maybe like a beef burger, you know. Um, like I said, maybe we have it like twice per month, sometimes maybe once per month, just depending on how we're feeling. But we'll drop it in every now and then. But if you don't want to use beef for the burgers, like like how he's doing them here, you can always, you know, substitute for turkey because I know um, Lorna says she uses turkey for hers. So you can always use turkey instead. So it just depends on whatever you prefer. So he's lining them up on there. Joel like says, I said, it would be about eight, about seven to eight burgers. <laughs> so Joel says, I want it well done, but charcoal is way past my limit. Absolutely. So you want it well done, but you know what? It's a bit of a point where it's kind of like indigestible and, you know, not liverful and dry and disgusting. So it's a matter of timing too. And sometimes, you know, you're a good cook and everything. You did it really well, but something distracted you and you left it on the grill or in the oven for too long or something and then it gets dried out by mistake but intentionally you know you kind of want it to be well done but nice and juicy so you can come back for more and for the ladies that just came on i just wanted to show you this because it started the show today really is the tomato because you know i've been featuring a different either vegetable or um vegetable or fruit or flower in my lives, you know, to time with my gardening channel because that's what it really is about. So the star of the show today is a tomato, vine ripe tomatoes. That's the best kind. That's just my opinion. I think they have more flavor. And this is the first tomato that I reaped. They're a little bit smaller this year because I didn't have as much time. I've been doing so much, you know, with the channel and other things and, you know, just different things going on. So they, they'll be bigger next year. But I didn't use the one I harvested because I wanted to ripen a little bit more. And that's because when I leave it out for too long, the birds tend to enjoy them before we get to. So I pick it a little bit earlier and I put it in a bag with an apple or, you know, a brown paper bag by itself, as the case may be. And that way it ripens up a little bit faster. And I also harvested my thyme here as well. So the first harvest right there and this one we're going to put on there after it's done. And that is going to be for the... Um, to garnish it on top. So just wanted to show you guys that. So 
All right. So it looks like you got them to be um, well proportioned there. And that's just the one more, right? Yep. Okay. So you got the last one going there now. All right. We're going to time you down that video. Seven minutes. Is it warming up again? Time. Yeah. Should be. 35. Now I'll put a little extra time because I'll take it out before. So if we put it on air fryer, if you don't have an air fryer mode on your oven, it's fine. You know, the regular, um, or if you have convection, you could put it on convection or just, you know, have it go in there. That's fine. Do you cover the burgers or you just put them in there? Um, them open straight, face. Okay. Straight. Now, All right. Depending on what you're doing, if you're doing it on the grill or if you're doing it um, in the oven or so, if you're doing it on the grill, I would say um, you could cover it, mm -hmm. right? And put a can of water in there, you know, um, by so, the coals, yeah, by the coals. So it steams out a so little bit. So in this case, I'm just going to put it straight in there, right? And the, the rack I'm using has a tray drip at the pan, bottom, drip, a drip pan, pan at the bottom, at the bottom yeah. so that will catch the extra oil mm -hmm. and so on when it's going. So, so you need to have that. So what I'm going to do oven. basically, um, I'm going to add some just water. I'm going to add some water. So that's it, right? In there. The drip pan at the and bottom. You can see how they're from, looking there. I'm going to just add a little bit of water to it, you know, just for some moisture, because that's going to help it as well. So, um, what did you want to use to pour the water? Just a cup, regular cup. Probably just measuring cup has the breadcrumbs in there, so I can't use it. Probably just use the pan no. to get some water from the filter over here. How much are we adding? About a cup of water. You add you more. Too much. You, uh -huh. you add more if you need to as you go along, but you don't want to add too much, otherwise the burger will be steamy yeah. instead of. So that should be enough to fry. do it. So I'll stick it in there for you so we can get going with that. You know, be careful. You don't want to put too much water in there because you don't want to have it spilling and you know making a mess inside there. Right, this is going to be long for that direction. Alright. Alright, so away with the burgers in the oven. So they're in there right now. So now we have to clean up. We have our board right here. Cutting board is gonna go ahead and get that washed. And we have some breadcrumbs left over. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the cold on. But I just wanted to say, normally when I am, um, and I don't know what you guys do when you're cooking, but whenever I'm cooking and I'm going to start like something raw, I try to do like, you know, like something I'm going to have uncooked first. In this case, we didn't, the time wise, we couldn't do it that way, but whichever, it doesn't matter. But I usually try to clean my surfaces because you don't want to, again, you don't want to have food poison. If you just had raw meat cooked, you want to make sure that the surface area is clean and everything. So this is something that I make for myself. I don't know what you guys use. You can tell me in the chat what you use. But this is actually a 10% bleach solution, which means one part um, one part bleach to nine parts water. And I just put it in a spray bottle and I keep it. It's not going to go bad or anything. You can always switch it out, you know, like put some fresh one if you want after some time has passed. But so for like this now, so this is, um, it has 25, what is this? 25 ounces that fit in here. So for a 10% um, percent solution, it would be like two and a half um, ounces of bleach. And then you top it all the way up to the 25 ounces. Um, you can just, you know, it doesn't have to be precise. It's not like we're in, you know, the There's lab or anything like that. Use a lot. But, um, but just to give it that proportion approximately, if you don't want to be, too, I mean, the, um, the bleach to be too strong anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just spray the area down and I'm going to put my gloves on. This is what I explained. You know, I have sensitive skin. So usually That's when I'm handing stuff like that, I put my gloves on. And then, oops. And then I go ahead and I clean, clean up the area. So if you guys use that kind of a thing, you can let me know. I saw a question sign. So let me see. So Stephanie says, um, where do you come from again? Oh, we're from Jamaica, my husband and I. Yeah, we saw each other in college in Jamaica. He's from the rural parts. I'm from um, I'm from Kingston, and we saw each other in college. But he didn't make a move. <laughs> so we were aware of each other, but you know, it never connected. And then years after we left, 
college we met up again and that's where it kind of kicked off so we are both from jamaica but his father um is from china no my grandfather yeah your grandfather is from um china you know a lot of people are not aware i know deborah you know because you are from puerto rico you know the kind of like you know the different nationalities and races that get mixed in the islands from time to time um, so a lot of people, you know, they're not aware that we have a lot of like, um, Chinese Jamaicans, a lot of them are kind of like mixed of mixed race, like my husband. Um, but there's a lot of, um, you know, like Chinese Jamaicans, Indian Jamaicans and so on. Um, but sometimes it's not well known for whatever reason, but yeah, we're both from Jamaica. So we've been living here for a couple of decades now. So we've been here for a while. And people say, I can hear your accent a little bit. And then sometimes, like if I start talking to somebody, like if I'm, you know, work, out with work or people from church or somewhere else, and then I see somebody that's from Jamaica and I start talking in our dialect or patwa, as we call it, they're just like, whoa, you seem like a different person. <laughs> like when we get relaxed, you know, like with any other culture, we start talking, you just kind of like, okay. Oh yeah, I'm from Jamaica and Deborah's from Puerto Rico. And we have a lot of similarities in terms of dishes, Deborah. We've talked about that a couple of times before where, you know, some things are kind of similar. But you did something, I think, was it um, was it bacalava or something like that where you use shrimp in there or sometimes you use salted codfish. So that was something similar there. But other things like the plantains, fried green plantains and stuff like that, you know, we use those things as well that are very similar in the culture. So yeah, Jamaica, our motto says out of many one people. So it's kind of like a melting pot down there. It's probably just not well known. And again, I'm not really sure why, but so it goes. So let's take a look at the chat. So Donna says, I put a little bleach in my dish soap. Okay, yeah. Because you really have to, because you know, like I always say like when I was growing up, you know, as a teenager, we're going like our little trips for school, for church, neighborhood or whatever. And food poisoning was something you hardly ever talked about. You could make a potato salad and you go on a trip with a potato salad and they may have it on some ice or something, but it's sitting out there for maybe like two or three hours and nobody got sick off of it. Now it has to be on ice like the whole time. Otherwise people might get sick. It has to stay cold. Otherwise, you know, you're somebody like, oh, I don't feel so good. So I don't know, you know, so you got to kind of like, you know, just be conscientious of cleaning up your areas and stuff. And I'm cleaning this a little bit extra, but oh well. But the more than not enough, right? <laughs> so let's see. So Lorna says, and I make dish soap, vinegar, and baking soda to clean up also. Yeah. And you know, funny enough, that little mixture you have, you know, that, that is good for your plants too. Like if you have certain diseases sometimes on your plants, you can mix in a little, just a little spot of dish soap in the water, a little spot of vinegar, and a little pinch of baking soda and just spray them and it actually helps. So yeah. So Neil says, okay, so kind of like New York, a lot of different races and cultures. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where it came from. I just saw mosquito guys. It's the season, I suppose. They are out in full force. We were having a lot of ants the other day, too. I don't know if where you are, you were having that, but my son got something, a protocol, and I'm not promoting anything, but it's called Tarot the Company, and he stopped them outside in the yard. We don't have any more ants in here, and I'm so happy about that because I had baked an apple cake for somebody. <laughs> My nice apple cinnamon cake. Put it in the kitchen because it was still hot. Rest it on top of my toaster oven, right? Over in the corner there. Next morning, because she had a function on July 4th. Next morning, I come in here and I look and the ants are all, they took up the entire thing. I was like, it's on top of the toaster oven. How did they even get on top of here? So he did some research and he found that product. It's called Terra, like I said, not promoting it. And he stuck it in the yard in a couple of places and we haven't seen any ants at all. So trust me, that thing looks like a charm. So yes. All right, I think we're fully cleaned up here. I'm sure you agree with that. It is fully cleaned up. So we're coming up next to our um the coleslaw. So I'm gonna be using I can take the gloves off. I'm gonna be using cabbage and carrots. And I'm going to do a green onion. How long does this take to bake? He's also going to do some, um, some, normally we make our, um, our fries from scratch. We just cut them and then, you know, are we making wedges and do them? But I guess for the purpose of moving along on the video, he's going to go ahead and, um, just get the one that's store-bought and put it in here. How long does this take to bake? 
18 minutes. 18? Okay, so it should be ready by the time the burgers are ready. So let me go ahead and just stick it in there. They are sizzling. I can hear them sizzling. Just wash my hands and come around there. Where is my knife? My shredder knife. I like using knives with a shredded edge, shredder edge, because it just seems safer to me. This just came from a dish. Oops. Oh no, I can't smell. Let's go ahead and get it washed off. So I'm coming around there in just a second with the cabbage. So we're gonna be making coleslaw. And I'd love to see what in the comments what you guys normally use for your um for your sides for your burgers. Because sometimes we'll have like beans, you know, of course, fries are a must. Um, for most people, fries, beans, coleslaw, which is what I'm doing here. Sometimes corn, like corn, you maybe grill it if you're outside or you just boil it, boil it, you know, with a little butter in there. And that goes really well, too. So it just depends, you know, what works for you. Let me take a look. Oh, Pastor Juanita. Hello, hello. She says, hello, everyone. Just joined for a minute. My honey and I are out celebrating his 63rd birthday. And our 30 year wedding anniversary. All right, now I see you. 30 years. Okay, show them how it's done. <laughs> yeah. You said to God be all the glory. You put the all in caps and the glory in all. Yes, we are truly blessed. I am truly blessed. Absolutely. So enjoy. Have a wonderful time. Celebrate yeah. it, you know. And, you know, um, my husband is saying, you know, wishing you greetings as well. We wish you all the very best. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's wonderful. Congratulations. So so I have the cabbage here and I have the carrots. I'm going to go ahead and um, get those shredded. Let me right. see what I can put in. Here. Say, um, I'm going to try it down a little bit. No. Oh, and Pastor Juanita, I was talking about the people who got their prizes so far. I know Penny. Penny said that she got hers, her, um, her earrings that everybody won from the 2K because that was the last lab that I did, the 2K subscri plus subscriber giveaway. So Lorna got hers. Penny got hers. Andrea got hers. Tiffany got hers. Who else was there again? Um, Stacy has been, um, she's international and she has been doing a couple of things. So um, I don't know if she got hers yet. But anyway, she, um, yeah, I could use this. But anyway, she um, she should have gotten hers too. But since everyone else did, she, she probably should. So... So congratulations again, guys. And again, I thank you all so much, you know, for being there and supporting our channel. We've been growing, trying to keep it garden focused and everything. And um, so far, so good. So yeah, she's passed. So Juanita says, thank you. Yes, my dear. Enjoy. It's a blessing. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, get my cabbage shredded and then put it over here. You guys can tell me like sides, what kind of sides you like. I remember when I was in um, you know, this I used a different cutting board, even though it's um it was for the meat stuff. Well, it was for the meat, actually. Let me have it a little bit um, close to it right there. So I just use a different cutting board. And my teacher, when we did um food and nutrition, she was just like, you know, those are too thick. I'm just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> she was something else. Very nice lady though, but she always one of the best out of us. So, you know, I try not to cut them too thick, but man, whatever works for you is what I say. As long as you, you know, having stuff that's nutritious and good for you, that's the biggest part about everything. And if you just joined in, you're like, first of all, then you get the time another day to kind of like, you know, watch from the, from the beginning, you know, to see how we started out with these burgers. And our tier of the day, which is a tomato, then you can always um go back and watch the replay, and you guys can share it out as well too, you know, for others, so they can see it. So you can tell me in the in the chat. Oh, Penny, welcome, welcome, Penny. I just talked about you that you said you got your earrings and you like them. And again, kudos to my sister Andrea from Andrea's Kidney Transplant Life. That's her, one of her hobby. She likes doing that. And she provided those prizes for me. And um, we certainly appreciate it. There were so many beautiful designs. I need to get back the rest of them for you. And thank you, guys, those of you who prayed for her, you know, while she was 
you know, going through an illness the other day. I really appreciate it. It meant a lot. And again, Penny, I want to thank you so much because Penny was on our live and I just asked for prayers for my sister. And Penny dropped everything and she prayed. Not like a one sentence prayer either. She really prayed for my sister. So, you know, she went through different processes and everything, but she's much, much better now. And Lauren, and same thing for you as well. You checked up on us and everything. You know, this community it really means a lot. Because people just see YouTube and they think, you know, it's just like a, say, a monolith, I suppose, of what their idea is. But it's a community too, you know. And, you know, you know, sometimes we'll have like issues, you know, with the algorithm or whatever the case may be. And again, sometimes I still be kind of like, just look closer at what you're doing and try to see what they're trying to tell you by some of the stuff that they suggest to you. They're kind of trying to give you an idea. But regardless, if it wasn't for that platform, I would not have known. Apart from my family members and those of you that I know from other walks of life, I would never have met you guys, you know. And we may not have met face to face. But we still have a very good connection, and I'm very, very thankful, very, very grateful for that. So, Berg is now they've been cooking approximately 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to add some more water in the drink pan, and this is just to keep them a little more moist. And if you're grilling them, of course, you would just, you know, like put another. Of course, you want to get something that's made of metal, if it's on the grill, and just, um, you know, go ahead and add some more water, you know, add a newer one to the container or add some water to it. So once that's kind of filled up, I'm going to stop. So I think we have enough there. Uh-oh. Okay. And that works. <laughs> yeah, our smoke detector works, right? That's about to stop. All right. So there's our coleslaw. I don't know if you guys make your pieces smaller or not, you know. But they seem like, you know, a decent, decent um size. I don't know if you have it smaller. Some people they put it through, you know, different types of um. They have the shredder thing that you just slide it along. There are different things you can use for your cabbage, but I mean to me it just seems like good exercise. So I'm I'm cool with it. You know, I'll go ahead and um just take a little arm workout because it's kind of like forced exercise, I suppose, which isn't the worst thing. Now I need to find my um my oh here's my shredder. It's right here. Cool. So guys, do you make do you guys make coleslaw? I'd love to know. You know, like what you guys put in yours because everybody got their own thing. I've seen a couple recipes where people they put um they use mayonnaise and apple cider vinegar and sugar but i'll just show you the way we did ours when we were growing up all right one thing with carrots is that because the color is bright and you don't need as much you know for it to have that nice blend going i'm gonna add just a little bit more because there's some that's not mixing at the bottom there little bit more to it. You want to have that nice pop of color. <laughs> oh, Penny says, what's for dinner? Oh, Penny, we having those juicy burgers that my husband is making and I'm making coleslaw. And that's pretty much it for right now. Normally when we're really running it, you know, like we have time to do different stuff. I'll have like a side of baked beans, you know, there with it as well with the burgers. And sometimes we'll have like other corn is done in the grill or it might have um, mac and cheese. Yeah, I might have the um the corn boiled corn. That's fine too for us. And then I'm trying to think what else we normally do. Mac and cheese. Yeah, mac and cheese for sure. Because you know the kids, well, my kids are a little bit older now, but nevertheless, kids always want mac and cheese. That's the one thing you don't have to force kids to eat. I'm yet to meet a kid that does not like mac and cheese. Honest to goodness, I'm not even playing right now. <laughs> How are the burgers looking? You coming along down there? Excuse me, guys. So, guys, give me, tell me what you think. Should I put um, should I use the red onions in the coleslaw? Because I have red onions. I'm gonna use it to put on top of the, the hamburgers, but should I put the red onions in there or should I put just the regular onions? What do you think? You can tell me in the chat. 
and he says it sounds so delicious. Joel says, for the smoke detector going off with cooking there, it means to prevent it from going off, like placing the batteries, reducing sensitivity of the detector, yeah. or preheating your pan. So reducing sensitivity. I mean, it, yeah, I guess if you're cooking, you could do that. And that makes perfect sense because you are aware of what's going on. But just be sure that if you do that, that you put it back so it can always pick up you know whatever is going on but that's an excellent idea i certainly appreciate that so what do you think guys do i put the red onions or do i put the red other one i'll probably just ask neil are those ready gonna flip them. they're gonna flip them over so that's what let me let you see how they're looking so far it's hot right, so it's now it's good for 20 minutes so i'm gonna basically flip them over so they can get color on the other side and then as you can see his burgers are very thick if you go back and watch the replay oh there you go very thick uh, burgers. Those are probably like about an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch thick. But that's how we like them, so they can be juicy. And again, we don't have them that often, so, you know, you can indulge a little bit. That's not going to fit right there. That's right. It's okay, Brady, if you can see it. You need your spatula thing. Yeah. Glasses. Oh, yeah, that definitely helps. <laughs> so he's flipping them over. You need a fork as well, let me you know. Yeah. Make sure it does. Let me get a big spoon. Spoon? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Oh, you need a big spoon. It's like a serving spoon. Okay. Make sure it's it together. I'm guessing you can see what he's doing here. Flipping them over. And like I said, if you don't like a whole bunch of onions, you can always put a little bit less than what he put there. But, you know, we like it to be flavorful, so... It's got a lot of onions in there. So, Andrew, what do you think I should put in the coleslaw? Red onions or should I put the regular onions? And tell me in the chat if you're still right there. All right, so we're flipping them over. And then people, they use like a meat thermometer. I guess we kind of just kind of eyeball it based on experience, but if you're not too sure, you can always use like a meat thermometer and stick it in there so that way you know the temperature inside and you know how well done it is. You know, just like you're doing your turkey or whatever else you might be baking, you know, if they're as thick as this, they're flat, it doesn't matter as much, but these are right. thick burgers. Right. So they're going back in again. Wash my hands in the meantime. <clears throat> let me see so andrea says i would put um i would put it in coleslaw for sure which one i was asking though what which one it was so you think i should use the red onions or should i use the regular onions to put in here the red one the red one okay that's gonna do it a pop of color so red onions it is remember put it on the top I mean, yeah because i need to slice on, it because i need to clear it off yeah, I'm not going to put a whole lot. It's just a little bit to flavor it. Can you put it up for you? You can see it, yeah. But like I said, it's not going to be a lot. I'm just going to put like like one quick piece like that. It's going to give it a nice pop of color. You know what? Red onions are nice into like a three bean salad. I'm not sure if you guys ever had a three bean salad, but it's so good in there. Let me that. Thank you. All right. We're going to go ahead and chop up the onions. Right. We're doing the red onions this time. Again. I have it a little thinner. Yikes. Okay. All right. Since it came out that way, let's go do that, that way. So he likes to use a smaller knife and I, oh, and who is it said, oh, oh, Betty, Betty is there. Welcome, Betty. I didn't know you were joined us. And Betty got her prize today. Betty, I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> Betty was our, our next uh, winner as well from the 2K um, plus subscriber giveaway. But, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, so I just, you know, and then I wasn't feeling so well either. So I kind of had to take care of myself and I didn't want to have anybody getting anything from me. So I stayed away. But anyway, um, Betty was our winner and she got her prize today. So congratulations, Betty. So I know I think I only need to hear from Stacy 
you know, she had a lot of stuff going on, so that's probably why. But other than that, everybody else um, got their prize. So thank you again, Andrea, for um, making those beautiful earrings. I'm not sure when the next time I'll have another giveaway again. Um, so whichever ones you guys really, really liked, I'll ask her to do, um, you know, more of those. So that way, um, you know, you have it. Because people seem to more like the blue. I figured it probably would have been people that have been more going for like the red and the pink. But people seem to prefer green, blue, and purple. So you kind of have to, as I say, give the people what they want, right? So if people prefer that color, then it's probably better to um, to make more of those. Unless, you know, it's a different um, demographic or something that might prefer something what's else. This, what's, this, what's the, yeah. the current fad? So people seem to prefer there was more the blue, the green, and the purple. And I thought they were so, so cute, honestly. And the, and the, um, the metal that she uses is pretty safe because, again, I have sensitive skin. So some earrings, I can't wear them. They rash me up, you know, my ears and stuff like that. But hers, I wear the long dangling ones that she made for an evening. Of, and I never had any problems with them. So they work out pretty good. So ladies, I hope you enjoy wearing them. And again, congratulations on your wings. All right, so that should be enough. You can just take that little part. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> so let me just go ahead and scrape this off in there. Oh, what do you guys use for your, um, for your, I guess we call it dressing on your coleslaw? Do you have the tongs anywhere nearby? I'm just throwing it in right now. The onions and everything else. Thank you. I'm just going to kind of like, you know, toss it around so you have it mixing in in there. This was something that we always did, you know, did on um, Sundays, especially. Growing up, that was one of the things that we um pretty much had. So some people they actually use um they use like mayonnaise a lot of salt and apple cider vinegar. But this is what I use what we've used for ours because it already is sweetened, so you don't have to add sugar or anything. It's condensed milk and then I add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Oh, Betty says she usually put mayonnaise on hers. Yeah, I see that happen a lot. Which is you know a lot of people do that. It's probably more popular, but I don't know. Let's say old habits die hard. Hello. Did we take all the apple cider vinegar? Uh, yeah, you have it on the table. Oh, it's on the table. Okay. So, this is the one. I mean, you have this brand, um, Bragg's or Bragg. Um, and this is, um, what does it say? Yeah, organic apple cider vinegar. Joel, you did ask about organic before. Apple cider vinegar. This is the organic one. And they said it has the mother in it, and that's supposed to make it even better for you. So, um, we use that. Um, you have the Walmart brand as well. I'm not sure if Target or whoever else you may shop at if they have it also. But that's pretty much um, what I use along with the condensed milk. And then I don't have to add anything else to it. But you can let me know. Some people, they put black pepper in there. It just depends. You know, everybody kind of does their own thing with that. I get my little dish out here. Go ahead and... So the burgers are coming along, guys. We're definitely moving along here. So the condensed milk, I'm opening it up here. And in this case, you just basically eyeball it. You put in whatever, whatever you want. In your taste. So put about probably two, three tablespoons. So it depends on how much of the liquid you're. And I mean, I just kind of like add as I go along. This is really thick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. If I want to have, I want to have enough. I don't want to have to go back. So we got our milk going there, and then I just add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And the onion, basically, um, I'm going to give it that nice kick to it. And whenever I do the coleslaw, I like to um have it sit for a while. So, do you want black pepper in it? Should I put some black pepper in there? 
put a little bit of black pepper. Some people put it in there, some people don't. You know, just give it a little flavor. I don't put any salt in there though, because I feel like, you know, we have salt in so many things that we eat. And it is necessarily the best thing for you. I'm going to add a little bit more, because again, I'm just eyeballing it here. It's a matter of consistency. It was very thick. I like for it to be a little bit thinner. So we can pour it really well. And you can add more or less onions if you want. It just depends on what you prefer. So still a little thick for me. And I add just a tip that more. And I always say it's better to add a little bit, you know, not have a lot in it. And you can always add to it and you have to go and try to take out because then it's just like, oh my goodness. You know, like when you're cooking food and you put salt on it, it's like it's easier to add, have to add more salt to your food and have to go in and try to get it unsalted. So I like that texture right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it I'm in. Toast, I'm going to toast the burger bread, the, the buns. I'm going to toast the buns a little bit. And if I feel like I need more, I'll just, you know, make some more and add it to it. Let me take a look at the chat. So Jean says, oh, Betty says, um, usually I put mayonnaise. Yeah. And mayonnaise has a nice flavor to it too. So Betty, do you add sugar when you put the mayonnaise? Because I was talking to somebody today and, you know, just to get her whole feeling on the whole thing. And she said that she- um, She uses mayonnaise also. She said she puts mayonnaise and then she puts sugar and, um. Mayonnaise, sugar, and what's the other thing? Mayonnaise, sugar, and um, vinegar? Yeah, that's what she put in hers. Popping it up a little bit more. The good part about cooking is always a little bit of experimentation, you know? A little Sorry. give and take. Right. For you. Thank you. So let me get a spoon and just scrape it out, and then we should be done. So I'm not going to get to chill this today because, of course, we put it in the refrigerator since we're trying to serve it up so you guys can see it. But you know, once you finish the step, you basically refrigerate. Oops. Uh oh. A little bit of a spill over there. Some pickles on. Yeah. Well, it could have been a little bit bigger, but anyway. So it is, my friends. So mm -hmm. it is. So do you guys normally put like bell peppers in yours? So she says. I usually just put the mayo, but next time I'm going to try to sweet milk and vinegar. Yeah, or maybe if you put just the mayo, you can maybe add it. Because some people, they put like um, a little mustard in there too. So you can, you know, it just depends on what works for you. So if you normally have mayonnaise, that's people say put a little spot of mustard because you're probably kind of used to that slight flavor in it. And then you just add it on on there. So typically I put it in another, you know, container and then refrigerate it. But since we're running along here with all this, I'll just have it sit right here. Because it will not be sitting for too long. So he says the burgers are coming out now. But this is our coleslaw right here. I like the color. It looks pretty. You can see the color of the cabbage. You can see a little bit of the red onions in there and you can see the carrot color. And I don't know if anybody puts anything else in there. We'll set that off to the side. And you can probably see the burgers over there that they're ready. Very nice and thick seasoning. They have a nice brown color on them, which we love. Good for the eyes. So we're pretty much, you know, wrapping it up here as far as the cooking part goes. So how are you guys managing with the heat out there? Because I know it's hot everywhere. I have a few people who are um, like Carmela, she um she is from Australia, so she's in the southern hemisphere. But for most of us, you know, in different parts of the world, we're in the northern hemisphere. 
around the equator in that year, and it's just been unseasonably hot this year. This summer has been something else. I'm seeing temperatures going up maybe to like, um, you know, temperatures going up to like 110, 117. And these are countries like Germany, you know, countries that you, Greece, well, Greece gets pretty hot, you know. But anyway, a lot of countries in Europe and just different places are having a lot of, you know, problems with all of this heat that's going on out there. So we've been up in the mid, we're in the south, southeastern United States, and we've been like in the mid to upper 90s this the past two weeks. And it's hot, but we're seeing pretty grateful. And thank God for breeze. You know, like when that little breeze comes through sometimes, it makes you feel so much better. So I am definitely thankful for that part. It really helps. So guys, please stay hydrated out there. You know, it's a very serious thing. Make sure you carry your water with you all the time. You know, keep it in a car. If you have a little cooler, you can keep it in your cooler. Because the other day I got stuck on the highway, guys, for three and a half hours. It should have taken me um, about 45 minutes to get home from work. Because that week I was in the office and there was an incident and I got stuck on the highway for three and a half hours. So you want to make sure you have water with you. So if something like that happens, you know, you have, you can stay hydrated. Of course, the AC was still going, but nevertheless, you can feel the heat from the sun coming and it makes you sweat more and everything. So, you know, it's good to stay hydrated. It's good for your heart, you know, good for all of your, you know, your kidney, all your organs to stay hydrated because they function better that way. And especially the heart is a very big deal with, you know, staying hydrated. So, you we're going to go ahead and get our um, the condiments cut now. So I'm prepared so we have everything. We'll put it further back so you guys can see it and see my face just a wee bit. So we have lettuce. This is the one I used today. And we have our red onion. If people don't like onions, they just, you know, pull that off. Sometimes I'll buy a romaine, but I have been looking like in the way they've been looking the last couple of weeks at the store. So I said, let me try a different kind. And I like how this one looks. See, it's a nice leaf of lettuce to add to your food. Of course, you always rinse it off. Probably going to slice that in maybe like three or four parts so it can fit really nice on the burger when we're ready. So I'm just going to cut it like so. And then again, like so. So we have, you know, some nice pieces there. And I guess everybody likes lettuce. I don't know anybody who don't like lettuce. You can tell me in the chat, like, what type of lettuce you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and cut the red onion. Not too thick a slice. Thick enough. And then comes our star of the show, our tomato. So here's our tomato. I'll go ahead and get it sliced. Oh boy. And I like vine ripe tomatoes. People like different types, but you know, especially if you grow your own, you know, like I, I do from time to time. And some people take the seeds out. Again, whatever works for you, you know, go ahead and do it. So we have our um, we have our lettuce, we have our tomatoes, and we have our onion, we have our coleslaw over there. And my husband got the fries ready. And we just need a nice plate. Which plate can we put it on that's gonna show everything really nice? Might be this platter one over here. Just rinse it off a little bit for you. And yeah, I like those. Every time I see these, I remember when usually get go and get fish over at <coughs> Hellsher in Jamaica or over by Glory, I mean Gloria's over Port uh, Port Royal. They give you a nice platter. When you have your fish in this man, it's just like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let us go. Okay. So we're gonna put the burger on. Let me grab one of these. Careful. Give it's me the nice. one over that side, it's please. Hot. Yeah. Is it that hot? Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. So it's nice and steamy. It didn't burn me, but it is warm. <laughs> Good looking out, as they would say. 
that's our bun right there. Some people like their bun toasted a little bit, you know, like we did here. Some people they just have it straight from the bag, whatever works for you. So this is the piece of our resistance. This burger is so fat. Oh, it's falling apart. You know why? Because it's a little hot too. So let's put it right there. And um, I guess some people, they put mayonnaise on there. I just right. put a little bit on the top. You can use whatever brand you like. You tend to go for this one sometimes, not all the time. I'm just going to put a little bit on the top. I don't like a lot of mayo in myself, but everybody got their own thing, you know. We all do what we do. Whatever works for you. I should have probably put this under the bottom, put it right here. Make it look nice and fluffy. Not at the bottom there. This is going to be such a high burger. <laughs> this is like Mount Everest. <laughs> so we put our tomato on the top. <laughs> and I'm going to put the onion on this side just for the purpose of making it. You know, if you're having it yourself, you kind of like squash it. You see, Betty says. Andrea says, I love romaine hearts. Yeah, yeah. So, so far, this is where we are. So, we're going to put some fries on the side. Bring it on over here. And we have to get a toothpick. Whoops. Yeah, we have to get a toothpick for it. We got our fries in there so far, guys. A little bit of, you know, I like when it's a little bit touched on there, a little bit of brown on there, too. As long as it's not your protein that's like that, you're pretty much good to go. So, let me see if I can get me a toothpick. And I need to put on there to make this kind of running away. All right, so we have it sticking in there. So we have the mayo on the top, we have the onions, we have that. And then we are going to be putting cheese too. We'll put the cheese on that side. We're just going to cover my onion. Yeah, put, put, put the cheese here. at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we're going to, when you're ready to have it, you just squash it all together. And then, I don't have that um, ketchup with your hamburger. And I'm just going to like, use it around to the side a little bit for show. Sure. And put it before you put the um tomatoes. Here is our mustard. This is gonna be fully loaded. And again, you know, you can put it on whenever you like, but this again, this is just for show so you can see a little bit of the you know how they do when they're staging stuff, it look a certain way to catch your eye. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our um coleslaw. To the side here. We'll put these over. Let me show you the finished product. So, guys, this is it right here. You can tell us what you think. We got our burger. You can turn it around. I don't know which side is better. Well, I guess you see the fries on this side. So, tell us what you think, guys. And you basically can come through and watch your video and you can see, you know, all the steps that we did to get it done. Everything is going to be there. To Georgia Peaches says, very nice. Thank you. So this is it right here. So we normally just, um, he's getting a drink because, of course, you know, it's summer. <laughs> it's summertime right now because you know that it's kind of like, it's really hot. So you always want to keep hydrating. Betty says, very beautiful. So she likes it. I don't know what kind of condiments you guys normally use on yours. So you have mango with it? Or... Yeah, something kind of tropical. So, you know, you have different brands, of course. We have Ting. Sometimes we'll use Ting, a grapefruit drink from Jamaica. No promotion here. We're just talking about different ones that we use. And this one is mango. So this is going to be so refreshing. You know what we're having for dinner this evening, right? It's a little late, but nevertheless, so we're going to be having that. So this is our mango right here. Yeah. 
okay. So um, you can add pickles if you want, but we're kind of like filled up here. So it, normally, normally Pastor Juanita, she's not there right now, but she always wants us to come in and take a picture together. Like she freeze frames it. So here we go, guys. So this is it right here. Here's yeah. your finished product. That's it right there. All right, so. so you guys enjoy. And again, thank you for, you know, for stopping by. Mm -hmm. And as usual, you know, we always say, you know, family is very important. So more power to you. We appreciate you all so much. And I hope this inspires you to make one for your next meal. You know, everything is pretty, pretty straightforward step by step. If you don't want to make your own fries, which we didn't, you can just buy the frozen one and you can, you know, just cook it for, what do you said, like about um, 18, for minutes. 18 minutes or 18 so. Minutes. And it gets cooked and you're good to go. You top it with, a, with, with whatever you want. We didn't use the pickles. That's the only thing I don't have on here, which I'll probably add some later when I'm having mine. But so that's the finished product. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. If anybody you think might be interested in this type of a recipe, share it out with them. Again, the star of our show today was the tomatoes because there's an abundance of tomatoes right now. I even have neighbors giving me tomatoes that they grew. So there are just that many out there. And again, this is my first harvest. First full one um, for most of the stuff that's there right now. My thyme, my beans, and my first tomato. So check out the channel, you know, for more gardening tips. Thanks again. Check out these ladies on here. We had um, we had Stephanie creatively miss me. We had Penny. We have um, Andrea's channel, which is going to be a great up updating soon, uh, uh -huh. which is going to be cooking. They'll be doing cooking on there. So, you know, check out these wonderful ladies. Lorna, of course, Lorna's the core. Oh, I see you, Lane. Elaine, I didn't see you on here because I saw you by Vetti. Oh, come over and say hi to Elaine. Hi, hi Elaine. Elaine. Nice to see you. Yeah. yeah, if you missed the beginning, you can always go back and check the step by step if you like. We certainly appreciate it so much. And I hope you'll enjoy the rest of your weekend. And thanks again for watching. And be sure to check out my other videos about gardening and flowers if you love those. We want to eat stuff that we grow if we can, you know, as needed. So yes, and, and remember also Deborah, also from Deborah Cabasa. Yes, and Deborah Cabasa was on here as well too. Yeah. So if I miss anyone else, I apologize. But um, if you watch a chat, you'll hear when I make the exchanges, so you'll hear their channels up on there. So thanks again. Take care, and see you in the next one. Bye. Bon appétit